Climatrix. Today we're going to have a look at the Gauteng Prelim for 2020. Please have a go at the exam before you actually watch these videos. If you need access to the paper and the data, you can find that in the description below. Alright, question 2, word processing. A document about the history of the Olympic Games has been created. Open the 2 history word processing document and insert your name and surname in the header. Right, so please don't forget to do that. So I'm editing the header and just inserting your exam number, like it would be in the final. 2.1. Add any page border to only the first page of the document. Right, so I think design tab, yes, page borders. If you're not sure, you can search it as well. Page border. Right, so we choose a box or a whatever page border you want to choose. And we're not applying it to the whole document. We are just applying it to the first page only. Okay. 2.2. Find the words Greek gods on the second page and insert a hyperlink to the website www.olympia.org. Add a screen tip with the text history. Okay, so that's the text we're going to use. To insert a hyperlink we can either go right click and use link or we can go to insert and choose link. Okay, now a website address we insert at the bottom over here www.olympia.org. Don't know how they picked that up, but anyway. All right, and we need to insert a screen tip called history. So that's the screen tip area, and we then say history. Okay, there you go. So the screen tip shows when I hover over the link and don't try and follow the link when you're doing the exam because the internet will be disabled. So you can't check that it works. 2.3 Display the year for the citation Young 2014 at the end of the fourth paragraph. So here's the fourth paragraph, Young and we need to display the year for this one. So if we click over here, we say edit citation, you'll see the year is currently suppressed. So if we just untick this and say, okay, the year will display. 2.4, find the paragraph that starts with while the Ileans. Insert the picture to Olympia as shown below. Insert a border around the picture as shown below. Ensure that the text surrounds the picture as shown below. And set the scaling to height 40% and width 30%. So this is where the text is. We're going to insert the picture. Going to set the border as they showed it. So the border is a bit tricky because it's not exactly one of the options that's here straight away. So I'm going to go choose a weight, like a thicker kind of weight, about four points. And then the easiest way that I've found, there's two ways. You can either choose this one that already has a double frame like this and then make it a bit thinner. Or you can actually go and right click choose format picture and then here by the paint bucket you can change the kind of line that they use and here by compound type you can then choose a thick thin line and then it looks like the example. Just make sure that you make it thick enough so you can change the weight. I would make it about six points. Now we need to change, I'm going to first change the scaling and then I'll do the wrapping. So the scaling I do here by size and position. And they said the, let's just double check again quickly. 
um, 40 height and width 30%. So 40 height and width. Oh, do you see the width already changed automatically? So they both change together. That means the aspect ratio is locked. So I need to untick this so that I can change them independently of each other. So height 40 and width 30%. There you go. And now I can change the wrapping to square or tight so that I can actually change it that it wraps around the picture or around the text as is shown. 2.5. Find any three digit number and replace the same digits with a green color. Right, this was a tricky one. So I go to replace on the home tab and under more I can find special any digit, any digit, any digit. So those are the three numbers and I want to replace it. I'm going to do it the way I would have done it and you'll see replace any digits not available again. And if I go and do this, copy and paste, replace with format font and I need to replace it with the same three digits and the font color must be green. Now please note, you cannot use one of these greens. You have to use the standard color green, not light green, the actual color green. Okay, the one called green. Now you'll see if I try to actually replace them, it actually gives me an error. I can't replace it with those three. That's not the way you do it. You actually have to say special replace with the find what text. Okay, so that's a tricky one. Now I can choose replace all. And you'll see it says all done. We made 15 replacements. Okay. Now, anywhere that there were three digits, it's actually replaced those three digits with the same three digits in a green color. 2.6. Find the table below the paragraph, the fourth incarnation, and do the following. Apply any grid table design to the table. Use the table style feature and display a header row. Display banded rows. Right, so here's the table below the fourth incarnation. All right, so under table design, I can apply a, ta apply a table style. Now, please, you can't just go and choose any table style. They said a grid table style. So please choose one of the grid table styles. All right, you can choose any one. I like blue. So there we go for blue. And then they said we need to choose a header row and choose the option for banded rows. Now, with the option I chose, you can't really see that, but it's marked from the settings. If I had chosen one of these, then you could actually see that easily. 2.7. Add the following as a source in the document. A book source, author Paul Charles, title Olympic Lists. Then update the bibliography on the last page. Now, please note, this is a separate instruction. So even if you didn't manage to do this, we can still mark whether you actually managed to update the bibliography. So please don't think because you couldn't do this one that we can't mark this one. All right, so please update the bibliography even though you couldn't add the source. But let me show you how to do both. References. To add a source, we go to Manage Sources, New, the type of source is a book, the author is Paul Charles, and the title is Olympic Lists. Okay, and close this one, and then go and update the bibliography. There you go. So you see this one actually appeared just so that we can check that you actually updated it. 2.8.
insert page numbers in the footer as follows. Start the numbering on the second page with the letter A. All numbers should be displayed as letters. Okay, so this one is a bit tricky because of the page border. If it wasn't because of the page, if it wasn't for the page border, it wouldn't be so difficult. So I'm going to go to the second page and I'm going to show you how I would do it normally. So normally I would just say different first page. I would insert a page number at the bottom of the footer, plain number, and I would change the format of the page numbers to ABC. Okay. Now, the problem with this is it starts with B and I can't change it to start with A while it is in an ABC format because there isn't a letter before A. So I can't, if I change it to start with A, it still wants to start with A in the first page footer. Okay. Whereas if it's in numbers, if I change it to numbers, I can actually say start at zero. And then the second page is one. So that's easy. So the easiest way to fix this is to actually change the fields formatting. So I can edit the field and change the field to display as ABC. And that way I can actually have just one section with the first page remaining with the border and then change, it actually then shows ABC from there on. The other method would be to actually insert a section break change the second page not to have a border and then insert the page numbers to start with the A over here. But that's quite a mission. 2.9. Insert the date and time in the header to automatically update. Do not remove your name and surname. The moment I put in a first page header, it's put my name and surname in the second he um, page's heading, which isn't the issue. I can put that in either the first page or the second page. It doesn't really matter. I'll just put it in the second page. The easiest place to find this is in the header and footer tab. My rule is always, if there is an on-demand tab, in other words, a tab that appears when you're in a specific section, the odds are you'll probably find what you need in that tab. So now that I'm in that tab, there you'll find date and time. Choose one that actually has the date and the time. Make sure the update automatically tick is on and say OK. And now you'll see it's actually set to update automatically. When we mark this, we toggle the field codes and then we can actually see that it's been inserted correctly and that it updates automatically. All right, now this one was also made extra tricky because of the border on the first page. Now normally, all I would do is I would go and insert page numbers on the bottom of the page. That's the first part. All right. Then to change it to letters, you go to page numbers, bottom of page, no, sorry, format page numbers, and then you can say the number format should be ABC. Now, whereas with 1, 2, 3, you can actually say start with 0, so that the first, so that the second page actually starts with 1. With ABC, you can't do that. So with ABC, it actually has to start with A. So there we have a problem. We can't just do a different first page because then the second page will start with B. Okay, if you manage to do that, then you used another trick, which I'm not going to bother showing now. The better way to do this is going to be to insert a section break on the first page. So I'm going to go to layout, breaks, next page, section break. Now, the moment I do that, I get a page border on this page again. So let's just first remove that. Design, page border none for this section. Okay, so my page border still stays on the first page. Now this second page, I actually want the number to start. So I'm going to remove this first page that I've tried because that obviously didn't work. 
And now in this first in the section two, you see I'm starting in section two, it now actually starts with A. A, B, C, D. All right. It doesn't matter that it's actually still linked to the previous because the previous now has a first page footer. If it didn't have a first page footer, then I would actually have to unlink it from the previous, unlink from the previous, and then I can remove it from the first page and then it won't have an impact on the second page. So format page numbers, I need to make sure that the second section actually starts at one and doesn't, or at A, and doesn't just continue from the previous section, otherwise it would still start at B.